Good morning. My name is Luciano Tastaldi. I'm a research fellow at the Cleveland Clinic. I'd like to thank the SAGES for the opportunity to present the findings of our work. And I have no disclosures related to this talk. So this is a slide that represents the current management of ITP. First line is, uh, uh, steroids are, are the first line. They are considered universal for the treatment. And they're employed when the, there is bleeding or where there's risk for bleeding, which is defined as a platelet count less than 30. And when the patients fail steroids after tapering, or there is another indication for a second-line therapy, for decades, splenectomy remained the mainstay second-line therapy. But in the last two decades, there were new drugs that were uh, uh, created, mainly rituximab, and most recently, in the last 10 years, the thrombopoietin receptor agonists, uh, eltrobompag and rituximab, which gave us to the patients the opportunity to delay or at least to avoid splenectomy. Also, that... Uh, shown that some patients will get better despite any kind of treatment. So the, the current uh, practice to design for the next second line therapy is mainly patient preference and the drawbacks and shortcomings about each of the, of the available uh, uh, treatment modalities. So splenectomy has the, is, is the only therapy that has a potentially curative, uh, but has the risk of perioperative complications and the inherent lifelong risk of immunosuppression. And the other therapies, they are non-curative. Non they require continuous treatment. They are costly, but they give the opportunity for the patient to avoid or delay splenectomy and wait for the chance of a spontaneous remission. And as a consequence of that, splenectomy is being each time less performed. Nowadays, it's 25% as a first, second-line treatment, as opposed to 70% uh, 20 years ago, following this tendency to delay or to avoid splenectomy. And the objectives of our talk, uh, of, or, of our study, was to characterize the short and the long-term outcomes of, lo of laparoscopic splenectomy for ITP. We had a particular interest in looking at the difference when, when splenectomy was performed as a, an upfront second-line therapy or when it was performed after uh, having used these newer second-line therapies. And we also wanted to investigate predictors of long-term sustained response. So our inclusion criteria was all of adult patients with primary ITP who were, with which splenectomy was performed by the senior author from 2002 to 2016. And we have excluded patients with secondary ITP because of the management of ITP ultimately in these cases is according to the underlying disease. We also have excluded accessory spleen splenectomies and we have excluded patients where there was a presumed diagnosis of ITP but the ultimate uh, pathology report had a different diagnosis. We had a prospectively maintained database containing outcomes and operative details. We complemented the information of this database with a retrospective review of uh, medical records and also telephone interviews in order to improve our long-term follow-up. And also with particular interest in looking at long-term complications of splenectomy. And the response criteria was defined according to the International Working Group. This criteria is endorsed by the American Society of Hematology in the guidelines of 2011. It was defined as complete response, where a platelet count is greater than 100, response when it's greater than 30, and no response when the platelet count is less than 30 or there is no increase uh, in platelet counts uh, more than twofold from baseline. And this has to be measured in two occasions, more than seven days apart and in the absence of bleeding. So we assessed uh, response status at 30 days and at the last available follow-up, we used Kaplan-Meier curves to estimate the relapse-free survival and at the last follow-up, we divided the patients between the complete responders and the responders, and we compared those patients with the non-responders and the patients who relapsed during the follow-up, and we used logistic regression to investigate predictors of long-term response. So we started with 128 patients. Four patients were excluded because they were secondary ITP. Two patients underwent an accessory spleen splenectomy. Three patients had a different diagnosis with, on the surgical pathology report, one lymphoma, one chronic lymphoid leukemia, and one acute splenitis. And there was 10 patients, 84%, where we didn't have neither 30-day or long-term follow-up available, so these patients were also excluded. So we ended up with 109 patients. All of those patients underwent laparoscopic splenectomy without intra-op complications. There were no conversions on this group. They were discharged after a median length of stay of two days. There was one reoperation on post-operative day two due to, due to an intra-op, due to a post-operative bleeding. This patient underwent a laparotomy. There was a large hemoperitoneum, but there was no active bleeding at that time. And the perioperative complications uh, on 30 days, uh, 
we had mostly common those venous thromboembolic events, which of those were three DVTs and two portal vein thrombosis. Those were diagnosed on post-op day 12 and post-op day 39. All of those patients were readmitted due to abdominal pain. And we also had one pneumonia, one bacteremia, and the aforementioned bleeding that was reoperated. With regard to hematolo hematologic outcomes, on 30-day follow-up, 9.8% uh, 9, 9 of the patients responded to a splenectomy, and those patients were followed with a median follow-up of 62 months, interquartile range 29 to 115, and at the, at the end of the follow-up available, 75% of those patients sustained their response and there was 25 relapses. There were 10 patients, 9.2%, who didn't respond to a splenectomy and in these instances they were treated with other therapies. This is a, a Kaplan-Meier curve. From this 99 patients that's, that had initial response, the relapses were most frequently in the first two years, but much more frequently in the first year. There was one instance where there was a relapse at 39 months and one patient who relapsed at 109 months. And regarding to long-term complications, there was one patient who had this post splenectomy sepsis complicated with septic shock 48 months after the operation. And then when we compare the long-term outcomes of laparoscopic splenectomy, if it was done right after failing steroids or after these patients were previously treated with any other second-line therapy, we could not see any statistical significance, which ultimately might show us that splenectomy works as fine if you're using it up front or after using the second line treatments, and patient preference is gonna to continue to be the determinant uh, to decide which type of treatment those patients are gonna receive right now. There was a difference in the, in the amount of the follow-up there was between the two groups, which is shown here. The follow-up, median follow-up was 48 months for the patients who were previously treated with a second-line therapy and was six, 76 months for the patients who underwent splenectomy up front. When we compare these two groups on clinical information, the only statistically significant difference we could see that the patients who had a long-term response, they were younger. No other uh, differences we could see here regarding the diagnosis and the management of, of ITP. And uh, here we can see that the patients who had a long-term response, they had higher preoperative platelet counts and they had a more robust increase in their platelet counts on short-term follow-up, both during hospital stay and then on 30-day follow-ups. And when we use that on multivariate logistic regression, the only factor that was shown to be uh, independently associated with increased odds for complete response or response to long-term follow-up was the amount of post-operative platelet count increase on short, on, on short term. So our conclusion is laparoscopic splenectomy can cure 68% of the patients with ITP. It has a low perioperative morbidity, but perioperative venous thromboembolic events remain a concern. There was a recent paper on surgery that was just published that uh, it can happen in almost 50% of the patients, and it's symptomatic in only 50% as well. And this is consistent with previous published data. The outcomes remain hard to predict postoperatively. The other papers who investigated the long-term outcomes had similar findings as ours with only a better short-term short uh, response uh, to splenectomy being a predictor of long-term response. And also we could see here that we couldn't see any difference between the outcomes of splenectomy before or after second-line therapies, but we think it's really important that future research is performed to compare prospectively laparoscopic splenectomy with the other second-line therapies, especially looking at the value of the surgery versus the continuous treatment of these, with these therapies. Thank you.